The interstellar object known as 3I Atlas, initially dismissed as the third interstellar comet ever detected, is now exhibiting behavior so strange that it has prompted shock and disbelief within the scientific community, with some experts, like Harvard's Avi Loeb, openly suggesting it could be a technologically advanced alien craft. The primary source of astonishment is its colossal and rapid growth. Its coma, the cloud of gas and dust surrounding the core, has expanded at an explosive rate, reaching a diameter of over 400,000 miles, more than half the size of our Sun. This makes it one of the largest objects in our solar system, shedding mass at a rate thousands times greater than any typical comet. This violent activity has led to two baffling contradictions. First, according to all known models, this level of explosive outgassing should have caused the object to disintegrate, yet 3I Atlas remains perfectly intact, implying its nucleus is incredibly dense and structurally solid, unlike the loose rubble of a normal comet. Second, its composition is anomalous. It is low on water ice, but rich in complex organic compounds. Most unnervingly, detailed images have revealed an impossible feature, a narrow, focused beam of light projecting from the front of the object, pointing forward along its path of travel like a headlight. No known natural phenomenon can explain such a coherent beam, leading to theories that it could be a navigation system, a communication laser, or even a novel form of propulsion. The official story was simple, a neat label to contain the inexplicable. It was the third interstellar comet ever detected. A visitor from the unimaginable depths of space, a stray piece of cosmic debris from another star system, offering us a precious, fleeting glimpse into a world beyond our own. But from the very first readings, the story began to unravel. Astronomers, expecting to see the scattered, chaotic light of a typical comet, instead saw something sharp, deliberate, and focused. The light did not behave as it should. It held steady, a resolute signal awaiting acknowledgement. It was not a reflection. It emanated from within the object itself, a self-contained energy source that pulsed with the slow, even cadence of a heartbeat. There was no dust tail, no characteristic halo of vaporizing ice. There was only a controlled, methodical glow that seemed to defy every rule of astrophysics. For the scientists watching in hushed control rooms across the globe, the moment felt less like a discovery and more like a mutual recognition, as if something ancient and aware had finally turned its gaze back toward us. As this impossible object continued its journey toward our sun, its behavior escalated from anomalous to utterly bizarre. Something began to happen that made astronomers sit up and stare at their screens in disbelief. The object was getting brighter, not just a little brighter, but dramatically brighter. This was not the gentle warming of a frozen rock. It was an explosion in slow motion. In a matter of weeks, the cloud of gas and dust surrounding it, its coma, began to expand at an exponential rate. The numbers were so extreme that scientists initially thought their equipment was malfunctioning. What was once estimated to be a small city-sized nucleus was now surrounded by a glowing atmosphere that swelled to unbelievable proportions. The first jaw-dropping measurement put the coma at over 400,000 miles in diameter. It had become a cosmic monster, a silent, blooming catastrophe of gas and dust large enough to swallow the planet Jupiter whole. This kind of violent outgassing, thousands times more powerful than any comet from our own solar system, is usually a death sentence. The intense internal pressure should have been enough to shatter it into a million pieces. The world's telescopes watched and waited for the inevitable breakup,
for the telltale signs of fragmentation, but to the absolute shock of everyone, it never happened. Three Eye Atlas held together. It endured its own self-inflicted storm, continuing on its path with its monstrous coma intact. The implication was profound and unsettling. The nucleus at the heart of this storm could not be the loose pile of ice and rubble that comets are made of. It had to be incredibly dense, structurally sound, and engineered to withstand forces that should have turned it into cosmic dust. The question was no longer when it would break, but what in the universe it was made of. The James Webb Space Telescope was tasked with finding an answer. By analyzing the light passing through the coma, it detected the chemical fingerprints of the materials being ejected. The results sent another shockwave through the community. While it had plenty of frozen carbon dioxide, which explained some of the explosive activity, it was surprisingly low on water ice, the primary ingredient of most comets. Instead, the spectrographs detected unusual signatures of complex organic compounds and heavy elements that were not supposed to be there. It wasn't a dirty snowball. It was a complex chemical factory. Then came the image that changed everything. As the Hubble Space Telescope sent back its first clear long exposure photos, scientists fell silent. The images were undeniable. While there was a faint, chaotic tail pointing away from the sun as expected, there was something else, something impossible. A narrow, focused beam of light was projecting from the front of the object, pointing forward along its path of travel. It wasn't a tail. It was a headlight. This is where the story jumps from a scientific mystery to something far more profound. A coherent beam of light, focused and directed, shouldn't exist in nature. It wasn't just a random jet of gas. The light was stable, almost like a searchlight cutting through the darkness of space. This visual evidence, combined with small, unexplained deviations in its trajectory, made it look less like a rock being pushed by gas jets and more like a craft making deliberate maneuvers. Renowned physicist Avi Loeb, who had famously suggested our first interstellar visitor, Oumuamua, could be an alien probe, argued that no known natural phenomenon could explain it. Wild theories began to fly. Was it a navigation beam? A communication laser sending a signal back home? A comet with a headlight is not a comet. It's something else. The light itself held deeper secrets. Analysis of its frequencies was even more shocking. They matched the same range used by Earth's own communication systems. Researchers found patterns eerily similar to binary code, repeating clusters separated by equal gaps, a clear sign of information, not noise. But before anyone could celebrate potential first contact, analysts made a chilling discovery. The transmission was not aimed at Earth. It was pointing outward, into deep space. Whatever message it was sending, it was meant for someone else. We were only intercepting it. This terrifying theory gained credence when 72 hours after one specific transmission, a faint return pulse was detected by an observatory in Chile. It was weak, distorted, but perfectly timed. It wasn't an echo. It was a response, different enough to prove something had understood the message. Humanity had just overheard a conversation in the dark, and it wasn't ours. In a bold move that no government agency would sanction, a team at the SETI Institute decided to take a risk. They aimed a narrow radio pulse directly toward 3I-Atlas, a simple greeting containing mathematical constants and diagrams of the human form, a way of saying, we see you. For three days, there was nothing. Then, exactly 72 hours later, a reply came back on the same frequency. The delay wasn't random. It matched the speed of light over the distance separating them almost exactly. It was a calculated response. Something had answered. 
Within 48 hours of that reply, the technical failures began. Telescopes across the world began to malfunction, but only when they turned toward 3i-Atlas. Screens flickered, data feeds froze, and star maps misaligned. It began to look less like coincidence and more like control. A leaked memo from the European Space Agency described selective data interference, concluding with a terrifying assessment. The object was jamming us. It was deciding when we were allowed to look. Government agencies reacted swiftly, shutting down public data streams under the guise of maintenance, cutting off access to real-time tracking entirely. Now this cosmic enigma, an object that has defied every explanation, is hurtling toward its moment of truth. It is on a collision course with its closest approach to the Sun, a point in its orbit called perihelion. This is a cosmic trial by fire, the ultimate stress test, where the Sun's ferocious heat and crushing gravity should finally reveal its true nature. But in a twist that feels almost scripted, we won't see a thing. In what is either a case of monumental cosmic bad luck, or perhaps perfect strategic planning, 3i-Atlas will make its closest, most critical pass while it is on the complete opposite side of the star from Earth. For several agonizingly long weeks, it will be totally lost in the sun's blinding glare, a period scientists call conjunction. It will enter this cosmic blind spot as a massive, still-growing anomaly, an object that was firing a bizarre forward-facing light beam, an object that answered our call and then blocked our view. When it emerges on the other side, we will have absolutely no idea what it has become. This period of total blindness is the ultimate cliffhanger, a question mark hanging over the entire solar system. It is the perfect time for an advanced spacecraft to perform a gravity assist maneuver, a cosmic slingshot used to fundamentally change its speed and direction without fuel, perhaps to break its incredible interstellar speed and enter a stable orbit within our solar system. The fact that this critical game-changing maneuver would happen while the object is completely and utterly hidden from our view is, to put it mildly, an unbelievable coincidence. It is almost too perfect. And so we wait, pointed blindly at a star that guards the secret, left to wonder what will emerge from the sun's glare.